All right, so I just finished Lewis Bell's monthly hit making class, and I wanted to share some things that I liked about the course and some things that I didn't like the course now that I have finished it. And this course was a little odd for me, not because of the course itself, but because I was out of town for a large portion of it, so I w was not able to submit uh, a lot of my assignments in on time. But either way, I was able to watch all the content and I have a good idea of what's in the course now. So let's start off with some things that I do like. Number one, the format of the course is excellent. I love monthly structure of it being pretty much unplanned. I mean, the, the structure of the lessons is planned, but Lewis goes into it. He has no idea what kind of song he's going to make. So he starts from scratch and you see the process throughout. So it's not like a shorter YouTube video where you see a lot of uh, different ideas sort of compressed and, and tons of jump, jump cuts. There's not really a lot of jump cuts. And so I find that to be just a better immersive experience because you can kind of see what the producer is thinking and the decisions that he makes. Number two is Lewis's teaching style. So in the beginning, he seemed like he was a little bit out of his comfort zone, which is understandable. I mean, this is probably something that he hasn't really done before, but after a while he really starts to gel with things and he just has sort of this chill laid back personality. He uh, He's really good at explaining like his thought process and there's not like a lot of radio silence, which is good of him just, you know, fiddling around in the doll. He really tries to talk through a lot of what he's thinking in terms of selecting different lyric ideas, melody ideas, and just kind of gives you an idea on what he's thinking on if something doesn't sound right or why he selects certain sounds over others. Number three is the pace of the class. So the pace is a very challenging but doable. And I think more doable than past courses that Monthly offers. Because I also did Ryan Tedder's course. And in that course, you come out with three songs. And this course, you come out with two songs. And I think two is much more doable because one, you can have more time to sort of digest the info that Lou presents, and you just feel less rushed with the creative process. So I, I really liked the, the pace of the course for this class. Number four is the assignments. So I really do like that monthly incorporates assignments in their classes. I feel like if this was just a series of videos, it would be really easy to slack off and just not really do it. But because you have assignments with due dates, it just gives you a little bit of pressure to stay on track with things. And not only that, they incorporate a structure to where if you don't submit an assignment on time, then you don't get peer feedback. And I think the peer feedback can be immensely helpful. So just having those assignments can just, I think, keep you better on track. You can technically go through the course without doing any assignments and just have the videos. I've gotten questions about that, but I just don't think it'll be as rewarding of an experience. Number five is the workflow. So I really liked seeing Lou's workflow. It is different from a lot of other artists that I've seen. So he approaches things from the standpoint of chord progressions first, and then the last thing he ever does in the song is add drums. And I feel like a lot of people do the drums first. So it's really cool to see his process. And again, because it's all very much long form content with very little jump cuts, you see his entire creation process from start to finish. And one other workflow idea that he implements is that because he needs to be as efficient as possible, instead of focusing on all the little nitpicky production elements in the beginning, he tries to get the structure out first. So getting the progression, the vocal melody, lyrics, getting all of that, and then he adds the production elements at the end. And that, to me, seems like a very efficient workflow. Number six is the arrangement. So when Lewis goes over his arrangement of his track, it is really refreshing to see uh, because he doesn't really have a lot of melodic instruments going on in the tracks that he make, makes in this course, yet it still sounds really, really full. And I think that goes against the grain of a lot of producers you'll see on YouTube where they'll have like 99 tracks of instrumentals. And I mean, yeah, it sounds good, but do you really need that? Like, do you really need that 67th track of this tiny little effect going on? Lewis really tries to emphasize the fact that you know, you don't need all these different sounds. You just need the right sounds 
that add the message or convey the emotion or add that certain element that you want in the song. If you have something in your song that doesn't really add anything if you delete it, then you might as well just should keep it removed. Number seven is vocal production. Lewis goes into some pretty insane detail when it comes to vocal production. I would say that that is probably something he spends the most time doing. So figuring out how to pocket the vocals correctly, making sure that they are tuned properly. When he's working with 24K Golden, having him do different takes to make sure that they have the most solid one available to work with, and also producing things like doubles and, and harmonies and ad-libs, echoes, all sorts of things that you would hear in a modern production. He goes into all of that and what I would consider to be really good detail. Number eight was his whole section on Melodyne. I had no idea that Melodyne was so freaking powerful. Um, so he has probably two hours worth of content on how he tunes vocals using Melodyne. And it, I'm gonna be honest, like it blew me away to see how much he is able to do because the takes that 24K Golden did sounded really good even without the Melodyne. And so to see how he fine tunes and crafts each note and can extend the, the length and duration of each and every note and the pitch ascends. And I mean, he, it's really quite mind boggling to see what he's able to do with it. Uh, and so it was just, I learned a lot from watching that. Number nine was seeing the collaboration process between Lou and 24K Golden. I just find it super refreshing to see two artists come together, put their minds together, and figure out what they can come up with. And again, you pretty much see this from start to finish. Very little jump cuts, them going through every little detail on how they want the sound to, or how they want the song to start, what they want the song to be about, what emotion they want it to convey, the lyrics. I mean, they go through everything. And what I like about how Lou does it is that it's very much a collaborative effort. So Lou will have some ideas, but then he'll give 24K Golden, the creative freedom to sort of explore different melody ideas, especially when it comes to ad libs. I think Lou does a much better job at this than Ryan Tedder did in his course, where Ryan Tedder seemed to be almost kind of domineering in his col uh, collaboration effort, and that he pretty much dictated where the song was going, where Lou and 24K Golden had very much a sort of mutual, uh, they contributed mutually to the song, and it was just really cool to see. Number 10 is the peer group. Now, I really liked the peer group that I was in, at least for what I was able to submit to them. They were very helpful, supportive, and they actually provided some actionable uh, feedback for me to implement in my songs. And uh, while I wasn't able to submit my second song at all from what I experienced chatting with them, it was definitely a worthwhile experience to have. But of course your mileage is gonna vary. You could have a bad group that, doesn't, that isn't very talkative, or you could have a really good group that provides feedback. And luckily in this class and Ryan Tedder's class, I've been placed in really good peer feedback or peer groups that have provided good feedback. And don't forget, I think a lot of people forget that you don't like lose your peer group when it's gone. Meaning when the class is over, you still have access to that peer group. So that is a really good opportunity for collaboration efforts. So if you hear a song that someone in your peer group did and you really like their vibe and you like the way that they produce their song or maybe they're a really good vocalist and lyric writer and you're a better producer, you can collaborate with them or initiate the idea because they're probably gonna be open to it. That's how I collaborated with um, Isla Noir for my Drive All Night song. She happened to also do the Ryan Tedder course and we collaborated that way. And so don't, you know, don't um, let that slip away from you. It's a really good opportunity. So now let's flip it and talk about some things that could be a con. So number one, this course assumes a lot of knowledge. It says this in the course overview that this is intended for intermediate to advanced um, artists and I would absolutely agree with that. It assumes a lot of knowledge. You better know how to use your DAW, how to record, how to automate, how to add effects, how to do bus channels. If you don't know how to do a lot of that stuff, Lewis doesn't show you. He, has, he, he assumes you know how to do all of that 
and therefore doesn't go through that. So if you don't know how to do some of that stuff, this course is gonna feel very, very challenging and probably a little bit over your head. So you may wanna do some of the more beginner courses like Ryan Tedder's, um, and I haven't taken Charlie Puth's yet, but uh, I've heard that his course is also more targeted toward beginners. Number two for the cons is that neither song had a bridge. And this is more just like a personal con for me that Lewis, for both of his song structures, the one that he wrote on his own and the collaboration song that he did, it was structured to where it was just verse, pre, chorus, verse, pre, chorus, outro. So in neither song did he have a bridge and I would have really liked to see his process in creating one because for me it's just typically been one of the more challenging things to do in the songwriting process but i get that in modern times a lot of songs don't even have bridges nowadays because typically the songs nowadays are sub three minutes but still it would have been nice to see uh but i didn't get that so oh well number three is that lewis bell's vocal chain is entirely cryptic and you will never know what he uses because he uses some house-made uh, VST similar to like CLA vocals that he's worked with others to make. So he has his own sign signature sort of mixing chain VST, but therefore you can't even really try to replicate his sound because it's housed in this VST. So he basically tells you that he has this VST, but it's not even one that you can buy because it's in, I guess, the beta stages, pre-production, whatever. And so it's not even available for public release. So that's kind of annoying. But as I've said in a previous video, I feel like if you have CLA vocals, you can probably get most of the job done. Um, and then you can also see some of the other VSTs that he does have in his vocal chain. He has a shit ton of stuff in the chain. So I don't know how much of it is actually super necessary because he doesn't actually go into detail about that. But just something worth noting. Number four kind of goes alongside that and that Lewis doesn't really go much in depth into VSTs whatsoever. Uh, he doesn't talk about like how to use compression or any kind of the basic things like that. He expects that you should know that already. Again, this is targeted towards intermediate and advanced musicians. Again, he doesn't go into sound design either. So if you're looking for someone that teaches you sound design, this is definitely not it. Lewis is definitely a uh, let's pick a, a sound and go for it, meaning like a preset, he's, he's into that. And then he actually has a lot of samples that he's favorited, so he doesn't really stray too much from that, at, le at least in these couple songs. But if you're looking for someone that really goes in depth on VSTs and which ones are good and how to program certain VSTs, this is not it. Lou, did, Lou does not do that. <laughs> Number five is that in order to actually follow Lou entirely, you need Melodyne. And so I have Melodyne Essential because it came with Studio One, but in order to do what Lou does, you of course need Melodyne Studio. And so I was like, okay, well let me take a look and, and see what that looks like. So that's $849. Not gonna be spending that kind of money. So just know that if you wanna tweak vocals the exact same way that Lou does, you need a Melodyne Studio because he uses the multi-track feature, which saves a ton of time with vocal editing. But again, is $850 worth that to you or would you rather just not have the multi-tracking features? Because if you get Melodyne Assistant, you can do everything that he does. It just doesn't have the multi-track support to make things easier when you have big vocal stacks. So that's one kind of annoyance. So even though there's some negatives about the course, overall, I would 100% recommend the Lewis Bell class. I think it definitely was the right pick for me after doing Ryan Tedder's because again, it went into those next level uh, songwriting strategies, especially when it came to vocal production. A lot of that stuff I just didn't even know about. And so that to me was immensely helpful as, as well as seeing just his more, uh, I find better executed collaboration process with 24K Golden. So if this is a course that does sound interesting to you, you can actually save 20 bucks if you use the link below. So be sure to do that the next time this class starts enrolling. And then you'll also get a code that you can share with others, which every time they sign up, you'll get $20 off a monthly course, which is pretty cool. All right, 
So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you are interested, this video might also be one you might like as well. Okay, have a good rest of your day. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.